So you've gone to restore your seed phrase on your hardware wallet and you realize that you actually have more than 24 word seeds in your backup. And you remember, oh man, you know, you'd inserted a bunch of extra words in there to try and secure your seed, but maybe you've forgotten which words those are. Fortunately, adding a bunch of extra words onto your seed phrase, even valid BIP39 words adds almost no extra security and is trivially easy to recover in BTC Recover. And I'm just going to quickly run through how you would do that now, as well as look at uh, what some of the practical limits are in terms of how many extra words can be recovered and uh, what sort of time frame that might take to do. And like always, if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop about content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So like all my BTC Recover videos, you need to start by going to GitHub and downloading BTC Recover. And uh, I definitely suggest at this point that you use uh, my fork of BTC Recover in that uh, the functionality has been extended considerably in that it now works with uh, you know other coins beyond Bitcoin. Uh, and also I'm continuing to update it to Python 3 and uh, fix errors as I go. So to do that, you just need to look at my other videos on how to get BTC Recover running on your platform of choice. And, uh, you know, it runs Python, so it should run fine on Windows, Mac, or Linux. The only warning I would say, and this has now been hard-coded into the program, is whenever you're dealing with your seed phrase, uh, you need to be really aware of the security of the computer that you're working on. Because, uh, again, BTC Recover is not designed to uh, try and protect your seed phrase and keep it secret and secure from other processes that might be running on your computer. So, uh, yes, just be careful. And uh, if in doubt, look at my other videos on how to set this up and run it in an air-gapped environment. If you find yourself trying to do this kind of recovery with your own seed, my suggestion would be that you first try to reproduce uh, the examples that I've done in this video. Uh, all of the commands and the seeds that I've used and addresses I'm looking for will be in the very bottom of the description. Uh, so once you've reproduced the stuff in this video, then I suggest you have a go with your own seed. And, uh, Again, the good thing about just trying to learn the tools using some examples that I've done first is that you can practice with the tool, you can get familiar with the tool uh, and be confident that you're using BTC Recover properly just on your normal desktop environment before you move into something air-gapped uh, where you want to run this with your live seed. So what we're looking at is a situation where this might be your best guess of the seed. It might be what you've written down somewhere, uh, but it's actually 34 words long. So somewhere along the way, just maybe uh, because you thought it was a way to increase your security, uh, you've added an extra 10 words into the seed phrase using some system uh, that you thought you'd remember. But in the two years since you did it, you've forgotten how you did it, and uh, you're trying to work out how you get back to 24 word seeds. So essentially these words in red uh, are extra words that have just been inserted randomly in the middle of this seed phrase. Uh, and you'll also note that they are all valid BIP39 words because uh, it would be immediately obvious uh, to identify and remove words that aren't on the BIP39 word list. So basically you're just gonna need to open up command prompt and uh, we'll look at the commands that we'd use to run it. All right, so those who are familiar with my videos on BTC Recover would know that we often use the same sorts of commands. So we're gonna be using uh, seed recover for this one because we're after a mnemonic. Uh, I often use no dupe checks just to help keep memory usage down. I find that generally speaking, an address limit of 10 is good in the sense that a lot of people, when you say, you know, find the earliest Bitcoin address you possibly can, will often find one that's within 10 uh, of the first address in the account. Um, but, you know, rather than increase address limit to something like 100, I often suggest then to use uh, an address database because that could be a better option. Um, we're going to say wallet type BIP39 on this one just so that you don't have to worry about the pop up. I'm also suppressing the security warning that I've added to newer versions of BTC Recover. The fact of the matter is you could pretty much leave everything from about here the same uh, for most people's recovery setup. So basically this one here is key. So this is the derivation path. This derivation path stuff's really important because it basically tells BTC Recover uh, what the address format is that you'll be using for the address you put in to look for, um, what coin it is you're looking for, because, uh, you know, BTC Recover does actually support a number of different coins. Uh, it also tells you which account to be looking in. So if you're using something like Ledger Live or Trezor, uh, you know, often you can go adding multiple Bitcoin accounts and you need to make sure you're looking for the right one. So you'll need to make sure you set that right for your situation. Um, these two bits right here are basically what you need to put in to tell BTC Recover how many extra words you've got in your seed phrase. So BTC Recover essentially considers an extra word to be a big typo. So setting big typos at 10 and setting our mnemonic length at 24 means we're going to put in 34 words into BTC Recover. Uh, so it knows what to be looking for. 
If you're using a 24 word seed, you actually don't need um, mnemonic length because basically if you put in too many words, it's going to assume that you have a 24 word seed. But if, for example, you had a uh, 12 word seed or something like that, unless you tell it how long the mnemonic is supposed to be, it's going to basically guess. So for example, if you had a 12 word seed with 10 extra words and put in 22 word seeds, instead of treating it like a mnemonic that has all these extra words, BTC Recover would assume that you've lost two and uh, treat it like a 24 word seed and actually never find a result. But for this example, we'll just leave mnemonic length at 24. So basically we're gonna stick in an address that we're looking for and the address is this one, it's one I prepared earlier. So we've got our best guess of the seed put in there and basically we hit go. And uh, now is when you go and grab your Bitcoin mug and go and have a coffee because this is going to take a few minutes. So I ran this test a few times using different lengths of seed phrases and uh, like almost everything else with BTC Recover, it's important to understand that uh, what we're dealing with here is something that is called exponential complexity. And what that means is that every extra word uh, that you might try and solve uh, doesn't mean it just takes a little bit longer, but you know, many times longer with each one you add. So uh, I actually just threw it in a graph here of some tests that I just quickly ran. Uh, and we can see that, you know, to do, you know, five missing words, it's done in under five seconds. So, you know, uh, I had someone email me over the holidays who had 27 words out of 24. And the fact of the matter is BTC deals with that in like three seconds. Um, so not a problem at all. So having an additional 10 extra words, you know, it's going to take about half an hour to run. Having 12 will take a couple of hours. Having, you know, 14 extra words will take a day and a bit. And having, you know, an extra 16 words is going to take, you know, two to three weeks to run. So uh, the main takeaway from this again is if you are just adding a few extra words into your seed phrase to try and secure it, this is a terrible terrible way to secure your seed phrase. Uh, it might feel secure to your brain, uh, but you know, it's incredibly easy to brute force unless you're adding something like 20 words onto your seed phrase. And uh, the fact of the matter is, you'd be far, far, far better off just using something like a BIP39 passphrase if you're going to go down this route. The only other thing is in the process of making this video, uh, I did notice that there are some situations where it'll essentially throw an error that looks like this. Uh, where it says negative shift count. Now, uh, I'll have a look at fixing that once I finish the move to Python 3. But the fact of the matter is, if you run into this error, just try padding your best guess uh, with an extra one valid BIP39 seed phrase word for now. Unless you're really hitting the upper limits of what is practical for this, it's just going to make your test uh, take a couple more hours. So uh, yeah, that's the best workaround for this for the moment uh, until I get around to fixing it. So if you're trying to follow this guide and running into issues with BTC Recover, uh, you know, just leave a reply in the video, send me a message on Reddit or open an issue on GitHub uh, and uh, I'll find my way to that. And if you find yourself totally stuck and frustrated, uh, I've actually decided now and put together some information and pricing for people who might want to have, say, like a Skype assisted call where it sort of help you through this uh, or even to do some sort of trusted recovery. But uh, there's details for that on uh, my website. There's a link in the description. Please, 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 please. Do not just randomly send me your seed out of the blue. I've had a whole bunch of people just do that over Christmas. It's terrible, terrible security practice and you've leaked it to half the world just emailing it to me in the clear to start with. So please, if that's something you want help with, uh, read through what I've got on the website that talks about how to, I guess, do that, how the pricing might work and how to send that to me in a secure way. Just don't just randomly send it to me, you know, using whatever random website you've got. Uh, where you think the image self-destructs or the text or whatever. Um, so yeah, all that info is there. Uh, I'd much, much, much rather you do it yourself, but if you're totally stuck, um, you know, I've got enough requests for this now on a regular basis that I've decided to put some structure uh, around how that's gonna have to work. Bearing in mind, this is still very much sort of a uh, side project and a hobby. So, uh, you know, the timeliness with which I'll reply to requests uh, on there can vary dramatically. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.